you doing YouTube? Uh, I just wanted to give some tips on how to take care of uh, estuarine stonefish uh, and other uh, scorpion fish that are available on the hobby. Um, as you know, this one is an estuarine stonefish. It comes from the Australian waters. This is the most venomous fish in the world and I just wanted to give some tips on how to care for them and also some other tips on how to care for scorpion fish that are related to this type. I usually keep the water around 77 degrees, maybe a little bit higher sometimes just so they uh, have that same feel when they are in Australia because sometimes they do uh, get caught up in the tides and are forced to live out of the water for some time so they are used to that heat that's why they do not have scales they more have like a skin uh, fleshy type of skin uh, to prevent burns and things like that uh, my stonefish here right now fortunate enough is able to show his spines um, these are the venomous spines that are on its back and have venom sacs in them and if you are unfortunate to step on them, uh, you could have a pretty bad day. So this is one area that you do want to avoid. As you can see, I have two of them. This one likes to sit in the sand. So I have about a two inch sand bed all around the tank. Uh, so he could feel safe, burrow down, and uh, wait for food when I do give it to him. My other stonefish, he more likes to sit on top of the rocks and uh, wait for his food that way. Um, as for tank mates, I do have a shark and two eels in this tank. Um, the reason why is because if anything that's the same size or smaller, they will get eaten by these guys. Um, it's unfortunate, so that's why I have larger tank mates in them so they won't think about attacking them and the tank mates don't attack him as well um, but you do have to avoid having large sharks or large puffers or triggers um, it seems that uh, like puffers and triggers like to uh, bite the corals and live rock things like that since these guys do stay still puffers and triggers think they are rocks so they will bite them and it will cause uh, some problems and you might have to get rid of that uh, certain fish uh, my eels that I do keep with them I have a zebra eel and a ghost eel they are more of the passive eels uh, rather than uh, your more aggressive eels like the uh, Teslas and the mores um, they Larger eels will eat these guys, so you have to watch out for that too as well. So more passive eels, your smaller eels like snowflakes, uh, ghost eels, zebra eels, uh, don't really bother him, don't pay any attention. They'll even go over him. Stonefish won't bother them whatsoever. Uh, as for food, I feed these guys silver sides, large silver sides. Um, you would have to dangle it in front of them a little bit, uh, act like as it's alive, and I usually release them, as you can see in my other videos. Um, I did have problems with one of my stonefish he would not eat frozen, so uh, you would have to um, act like a fish, study the movements of small fish, or maybe even throw a live fish in there to get them interested. That's how I had to do it. Uh, threw in a live fish, got him interested, and uh, he went after it. Next day, I went in there with a frozen uh, silver side, took it right away. So you just have to stimulate them, and now he eats frozen, no problem. Um, other things as into handling these guys, I told you that the venomous spines are at the top. I do not grab these guys unless I really have to. Um, the best way is to go from underneath. I use uh, Kevlar gloves 
that are waterproof and aquarium safe. So if I do have to, I go from underneath and hold them from the bottom. Um, that's the best way as uh, I could put it as to handling them, but do not handle them unless it's absolutely necessary. Um, if you have any other questions, let me know. Thanks.